working in bringing access to clean energy um, that's like wind, wind power and solar power to, uh, to communities that, uh, to, to lower income communities and, and moderate income communities. So communities that might have trouble accessing this type of uh, energy. That's the idea behind um, our organization. It operates sort of like a business, but it's a nonprofit organization. So um, I founded this with a, a few friends um, in uh, 2009. Um, and really what we were looking at was um, there's an opportunity for uh, communities to save money on their energy costs, which is a huge cost for, for uh, any family. Um, and as well for, for nonprofits uh, and small businesses. But also, how can we help uh, those folks to access uh, more renewable um, sources of energy, um, sustainable sources of energy, so that we're actually a part of this, uh, part of the solution of growing this sort of renewable, renewable energy economy that I think has a big part of, you know, potential to drive sustainability in our communities and. Uh, as well as, you know, has big national security implications in, in getting us off of just fossil fuel only. Um, so, uh, the idea sort of that we operate around is that um, that, that really the, the, the enterprise or the nonprofit has been able to grow from. Um, and as I guess a quick note, we started in neighborhoods just in Washington, D.C. Um, and the project and enterprise has grown to multiple cities up and down the east coast of the United States. So um, we're in Baltimore, Philadelphia, uh, moving into Delaware Valley, different areas of Pennsylvania. When people as individuals um, buy, their, uh, buy their energy or they sign up for electricity contracts, they don't have very much, they have basically no power over the utility or with the utility company or energy companies. Um, they're just sort of another uh, kind of drop in the bucket, so to speak, to the energy companies. Um, but when you pool together lots of um, institutions or lots of households into big groups of buyers of energy, then um, you actually have the ability to negotiate those rates, um, those rates for electricity costs and energy costs down significantly um, to the point that people can save 20%, 30% on their energy costs. And that's, you know, for a household that could be thousands of thousands of dollars um, and uh, in that process we're actually able to because we represent for the energy companies for example like five million dollars of contracts because we've got 300 homes um, a number of faith-based organizations uh, community organizations small businesses those energy companies it makes economic sense for them to, to win those customers to reduce their prices for each of the participants um, so that through that process, we're able to actually gain, uh, shift folks over to new contracts where they're at much lower rates for their energy costs. Um, but also, uh, we can shift people over to um, renewably sourced electricity, um, not just fossil driven electricity. So that's the kind of concept behind Groundswell. Um, I wanted to try to get as quickly as I can into the process of like, what, what was it like uh, to start right a project like this, um, it's not a, it's not it's never a linear process. There's fits and starts, um, and I'm also I think the only I don't know if I am, but maybe the only person in the room that started a nonprofit organization, which is a little bit of a different different beast, um, but can be a way to uh, you know it does not mean that you're running a nonprofit does not mean that you're um, not making a, a good salary, it doesn't mean that you're uh, not having a big impact, and it doesn't mean that you can't build something that's really entrepreneurial, um, because this really is a very entrepreneurial enterprise. So we started by um, uh, knocking on doors and meeting with some community groups, um, and you know, recognizing that, I mean, I think a, a key part is that we responded to a problem that we were hearing in the community already, right? So people were, um, people were saying, hey, you know, I'm interested in, in, in clean energy, or I'm interested in uh, renewing my electricity bills, but 
uh, I don't really have any, uh, I don't know how to change my electricity contracts. I don't really have any power when it comes to my power company. Um, and uh, we're looking for um, new solutions. And some of the community groups that we were talking to actually asked us, they said, you know, what if we, uh, what if we were to come together um, and try to, try to negotiate as a group for um, energy services? Um, and so we actually did a pilot project without any um, funding first. And this is part of the, right? I mean, this is, this is uh, part of the risk element of, of entrepreneurship. But um, uh, we, uh, to, to be honest, we were, um, I was on uh, unemployment benefits <laughs> when I was working on this project. So there's no shame in that, right? Um, and as we're actually another, another uh, co-founder, we were coming out of an, another line of work. Um, and, uh, but we felt like we were onto something and we wanted to test it. So we tried to figure out a way, what's a way that we can test this in a real way in the marketplace um, at a really sort of inefficient, in an efficient way, right? That won't cost too much time. Um, and, uh, uh, and so we tested first. Then, we, we tracked, we carefully tracked the results and the stories of the people that participated. So um, we made sure that to see, wow, people actually saved significantly on their, um, saved significantly on their, basically to prove that this project had worked. That was really, really important, right? You want to capture the data um, so that you can then go and tell the story to people that might want to fund you um, as a, a bigger project or an enterprise. There's an organization called the Foundation Center, um, which um, is a free resource uh, where you can go online and just search through, essentially, by, by topic. So you can say, you know, for us it was like environmental and uh, community development, right? Because we're helping people save money, so it's like community development work. Um, and it will spout out, here are all the different foundations um, and individual donors that uh, are interested in these topics. Um, I could follow up and send links to some of these resources too. So that was really helpful. Um, and uh, then we, we looked into um, who are the organizations that are in a, on a really local level that were really invested, the foundations or donors that um, had already been funding projects in the geographic area where we were working um, and that were really focused on the people we were trying to help. Um, and we went and we met with them, um, and you know, a couple. We, we left a couple meetings with our tail between our legs. If you count the like, we didn't even get the meeting at all, <laughs> or they didn't reply to the email. It was probably like ten to one, right? So we got like a bunch of people didn't respond to the emails, um, and then we got three or four meetings, and one of those meetings panned out. Um, for our first funding, and it was small. It was, a, you know, it was not a big. It was not going to pay our salaries, right? Um, it was. Uh, I think it was, uh, you know, eight thousand dollars toward our next project. Um, but they were a respected uh, community organization in the in the communities we were working in, and then we were able to point to that with some of the larger funders and, and grow from there. It only takes really getting that one meeting that goes well. Um, to, to start the momentum going. And then you can point to that first funder, and then you've got other people, and then suddenly you're building momentum, and everybody wants to be a piece of it, right? So it. Um